Q think that he's getting the last laugh. Fatima said, what you say? And Andy is not rid of Gary just yet. What's good, y'all? It's your good sister, Erica Vane. Coming to you right here on Erica Vane TV with another sister's video. In this video, we are breaking down season five, episode number four. And we're going to go ahead and jump right on into it like the episode did. Because we pick up right where we left off from episode three with the repercussions of Zach calling Fatima Karen. Mm-hmm. All right, so we progress for their storyline with Fatima like, yo, Zach is not over Karen. She's been telling Zach this. She's also telling Andy this in the episode. And there's so much discourse happening on, like, Twitter specifically that I'm seeing. And I've, like, decided to not get into the conversation specifically on Twitter. But y'all know, y'all my people, I'm going to talk about it here. I don't think that she's wrong. So many people are, like, pointing to Fatima's insecurities and basically trying to make this more so about her and I guess what she's lacking in reference to questioning Zach in this way however she's right like two things can be true at once right like Fatima can have insecurities but be completely valid in her questioning of Zach and I think specifically with this she's 100% right I have been struggling with the idea that Zach has been pushing the narrative that he is so over Karen meanwhile he cannot lose look at Aaron walk up to him at the mutual gym that they both go to and Aaron say hello Zach without him throwing his hands up in the air without him rolling his eyes all the way back to Narnia in the back of his damn head shrugging his shoulders and about to throw a damn fit Karen's name cannot be mentioned without him eliciting some type of visceral reaction which tells me that there's something living on the inside of your body sir that maybe you don't want to feel maybe you don't want to believe maybe you don't want to be immersed in however your body is not gonna lie our mouths will always lie but our bodies do not lie and whether y'all want to believe that to be true or not it is true Point blank period. There's something to be investigated here when it comes to Zach and him having these visceral reactions. Yes, Karen has been tripping. Yes, Karen has been doing a lot. However, when you get to a healed place, when you get to a healthy place about some traumatic or triggering, sh it doesn't elicit the same response from you anymore. That is how you actually denote that, that you are actually healed or through something. But if you are still acting or responding in a way that is still visceral, that is still so, um, just very emotive, then there is something to it. We don't make the rules, Zachary. And for me, I would much rather him take the time that he needs to really investigate and reflect on why he does the things that he does versus trying to fight and deny it as if niggas are like blind and cannot see plain as day that something is there. Yes, you might not want Karen back at this moment in time. Yes, you might see the value in Fatima and who she is, what this relationship is and what this relationship has done for you. A hundred percent. Yes, you might possibly really deeply love Fatima and want to marry her in this moment. And you might also still have yet to release your full feelings for Karen. Again, two things can be true simultaneously. And for me, Zach just reaffirms how immature he is in the fact that he can't just be a man and have that conversation with himself. Not even saying that he got to have that conversation with Fatima, but like have that conversation with yourself because while you hooting and hollering and throwing your hands up and rolling your eyes and getting annoyed, you're also not unpacking and dealing with the real sh at hand. All of that is all distraction mechanisms for you to not actually sit with your actual feelings and get down to the nitty gritty. It's performative and we're over it we have seen it now for four seasons and we're done and whether y'all are like teams of Tima or not whether y'all are like Fatima all day Zachary all day you team Zach cool 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 but like let's call a thing a thing and be honest with the fact that when it comes to Karen Zach responds the exact same way today that he has responded from season one and that should be a problem if you are actual healthy functioning uh, cognitive thinking human being. Okay. 
So Fatima, no, sis is not wrong. Now we have gone back and forth as we have already talked about the team of the series. And if you missed it, I do have all the breakdowns for all the episodes for season one, as well as additional conversations around storylines that happen over as a team, right? So we've already talked about that and we've been going back and forth over the course of that of like when Fatima's wrong and when she's not wrong. And also I want to kind of shift this particular moment from like being wrong or right. I think that the biggest issue right now that's presenting itself within Zach and Fatima's relationship is not necessarily who's on the right side and who's on the wrong side, but how willing are we to actually address our sh right? I think that we saw Fatima take steps at the at the like site of Ian, the reintroduction of Ian back into her life and that conflict, which is pretty much all the drama that she brought into the relationship or what she has on her end. She literally did what she had to do, had conversations, had reflections, like took time to sit with her feelings and do everything that she needed to do to deal with her stuff. We have yet to see Zach fully deal with his stuff. I'm still struggling with how he responds to Deja because I think that he is entirely too nice. And after watching this episode, I do believe that Deja does not actually want him that somebody sent her to push up on him like this because when you go to Zatima right and you go to the party scene where Zach is pissed about Ian and he runs off to go hang out with the boys because Fatima ain't tell him and he crying and wah 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 cool 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 they actually make eyes at each other. She's dancing at the party because she's stripping. Cool, cool, cool. Zach gets drunk. And then when Bryce finds him, she's actually sitting on his lap. But, and I did, talked about this in the breakdown for that particular video. I felt like she was doing that more so as like a new friend. Um, this is my landlord and I'm trying to protect him. So I don't think that she was pushing up on him in that way. I felt like she was like occupying him so that none of the other strippers that was there, none of the other girls that was there would interfere or do anything. Like you literally get to hear her say like, yes, please take him home. I'm glad that somebody's going to make sure that he's going to be okay. He's safe. I'm working. Cool, cool, cool. And that's the energy that she has. So to see this big shift, especially like towards the end of the team of season one, and then now her introduction into the sisters universe and seeing her at the gym and her being so persistent and pushing up on Zach, there to me has to be another motive. And it's not just so that she don't have to pay rent. I really don't believe that. Somebody has orchestrated this. And I don't know if Hayden knows her at this point. And I hate to go down these little rabbit holes. Like y'all be DMing me like crazy talking about all these conspiracy theories and all of that. And that's cool. Like keep sending them to me. But if I don't engage, it's because I also try to limit a certain like level of like exploring certain things because sometimes y'all be coming to me with stuff that's like way completely left field like i i that's what tyler perry to figure out and until he tell me i'm not gonna necessarily get on board with that but i do feel like somebody is behind deja pushing up on zach in this way because this is what this was not the energy that she had from the jump she has shifted to a much more aggressive woman when it comes to pushing up on him and oh he's fine and throwing it into Fatima's face now I don't know if it's Hayden because I still don't think that Hayden has met her just yet or if it's his homeboys which will be even worse of a problem and that could be something that we're seeing getting set up for season two they have already filmed season two of Zatima so hopefully we'll be getting that maybe at the top of the new year but somebody I do believe is behind Deja just doing the damn most because every single episode it gets worse and worse and worse and at this point I am not opposed to Fatima ragtagging that ass you better be glad that all she did was slam your damn arm in this locker honey because you're really pushing the damn boundaries like you really need to go ahead and go away you have a nice house that you live in for you and your kid and whatever you had this big old sob story before about you had never lived on your own yada 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 girl all of that's about to be taken from you and I don't give a damn about you trying to take me to court behind oh you a stripper in this in this um in this some type of uh discrimination because at this point you're sexually harassing him uh-huh yes women can sexually harass men and yes i'm all for with fatima handling what she got to handle but if we got to take it to court we can go ahead and do that we can we can really go ahead and do that and going back to zach I don't feel like, again, he's actually handling his business. When it comes to Deja, he, like, has such playful energy of, like, oh, why do you do that? Oh, my God. Like, girl, chill. Like, relax. He also has this visceral reaction, and I feel like this is also him 
still playing with who he used to be. Like playing with old Zach. Zach attack is still at, under the surface and could be accessed at any point. And if Zach wants to truly move forward and have a healthy, responsible, beautiful, loving relationship with Fatima, he is going to have to disassociate with all the things that no longer serve him. Zach attack does not serve you anymore. Playing with these girls, like there is no way that at this point, Deja should be able to bend over at this gym and be like, can you spot me and think everything is cool? Her ass should have been talked to. And while Fatima's like, you need to talk to Karen about calling me so many, just that's okay, cool. That needs to be dealt with too. However, Karen is a whole other thing. Let's start here. Let's start with actually establishing boundaries for your tenant who thinks that you're fine or whatever and has pulled her shirt down and showed you her bra and bent over in front of you multiple times and you just sit there looking. You just sit there uncomfortable. You just try to make a joke and pass it off so that you can try to protect her feelings. No, her feelings. It's about Fatima's feelings. It's about y'all's relationship. Zach, it's time to show, get off the pod. Zach is not doing enough of unpacking his bullshit and handling it for me. And I'm going to keep calling the thing a thing. Can love Zach down. He could be the finest thing walking. Cool, 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 cool. But also, let's do the real work, King. You want to be a leader of this family. You want to be rolling up on Fatima in this episode. He shows up at her job because he knows that she's mad and he wants to talk and all this. Stuff. Like, Zach be mad demanding when it comes to Fatima to do stuff. When are you going to do what you got to do on your own? When are you going to do what you got to do without being prompted, without Fatima having to get an attitude, without Fatima having to walk away from you, without Fatima having to snatch back and tell you, you need to let me go right now before I deck your ass? When is that going to happen, Zachary? Because we're waiting. I honestly think that Zach got the perfect person in Fatima because she is pushing him in ways that Karen did not in reference to he's literally going to have to get this together or go back out on the market. And it ain't looking good for you, sir. Because when you don't have Fatima and you don't have Karen to go back to, because I do think that we're watching the process of Karen get her shit together. In this episode, she makes a realization about Fatima and I'm excited to talk about that. But he won't have Karen to go back to you going to go back out here to these dusty ass, fine, but dusty ass models and whoever else you want to be banging. You're going to go out here to the dusty Dejas who don't have much of nothing to offer you but a cute face and a fat ass. And I hate that for you, Zachary. Let's get it together. Now, going to my girl, Karen, she realizes in this episode that Fatima did not call Aaron and it was probably the doctor who Aaron knows and I do think that there's going to be an apology coming from Karen to Fatima very very soon y'all Karen got like we haven't heard this in a while like I feel like we haven't heard this in season two Karen was like yeah Fatima's a cool chick I hope y'all caught that because the way that y'all be on my good sis neck as if she's like completely just unhinged and that's not necessarily the case she's just going through some things right now I love this for them. I love the, the the impending apology that's coming. I love that Fatima's actually going to forgive her and realize that, that Karen is not actually her enemy. Her problem is really going to be Zach and his feelings and him being able to get to the to the to the core and the root of all of it, right? Um, I am looking forward to the day that Karen and Fatima are actually friends. My God, I cannot wait for it. I am just going to smile from ear to ear watching when Tyler Perry finally graced us with that day. In this episode, Karen is still on bed rest. She's supposed to be on bed rest for the next week. So we're going to see her at, this, at her apartment for quite a while. Mama Lisa's already hard at work. Like, let me go ahead and clean up my daughter's mess. She done called Aaron. She done called Zach. Both of them are coming at 8 p.m. tonight. I don't think that we're going to see that next episode, but I do think that that's going to be in episode six. So that's going to, like, um, it's going to drag out just a little bit, but we're going to have more than enough next week's episode with the introduction of Madam. So I ain't even stressed about it. But I'm really looking forward to miss lisa bringing everybody to the table to have just an open and honest conversation and like say what it is say what it ain't i love how you know she basically reminded karen to like speak now or forever hold your damn peace honey because this is not something that's going to be able to continue to just drag out for the rest of your damn life everybody needs to move on i love that she has karen writing these letters like i just think that and i'm, I'm trying to also like temper my expectations y'all because i'm really getting excited about this potentially amazing dialogue that we're about to see from these grown-ass people 
but I also don't want to put too much on it because I don't want Tyler Perry to break my damn heart. But I am really looking forward to this round table of the hearts that's about to go down at Karen's house, okay? Now, um, Andy, child, they're going to make me talk about Andy and Gary if it's the last thing that they do. Apparently, Gary showed up and he's going to Robin as a man. We don't get to see it in this episode, but it's alluded to because Hayden comes over and he's like talking sh and all that, yada, yada, yada. Um, he's like, yeah, he's in his office, blah, 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 blah. Cool. I hate this for me. <laughs> me only. <sighs> What are you doing? Like, Gary, what the hell? You know what? I talked about that in the preview video, so I'm not going to go into Gary actually being in the office because we didn't see that in this episode. Andy and, and Hayden's back and forth was the most unnecessary stuff in the whole damn episode. And, y'all, I'm actually going back now and realizing I totally missed Q's introduction. Like, he started work in this episode. I thought he started work next week. I completely skipped over it. That's how much I don't like looking at Q, and I think that his storyline is completely dumb. Like, wow. I literally skipped over the whole part. Okay, Q's at the damn airport, y'all. And he's high. I need Danny to figure out that he's the reason why Sabrina's in jail so she can wax that ass. And not in a good way. Not, like, sexually at all. Like, beat his ass at this airport and go ahead and lose your job. Because you don't even like this job, Danny. I need that to happen. I don't know what. Like, I'm now going on change with y'all. The moment where Mama Lisa called Aaron and he's sitting at some office, I was like, ain't he a damn preacher? What? What? Not y'all giving us office views for Aaron, but he was looking damn good now, y'all. Like, he was looking very distinguished. Mm-hmm. Very distinguished. All right. I'm really just deflecting and trying not to talk about Andy. Andy called, well, Karen calls Andy in this episode and lets her know about, you know, what's been going on because y'all know we haven't, they haven't talked. Andy was looking for her a couple episodes ago, came by the salon. Cool, cool, cool. Um, Andy storyline just about to drag about Gary and I'm over it between her and Gary and her and Hayden. Like it just was so pointless sending off empty threats. The best part of like seeing Hayden in this episode was like him getting annoyed that Zach was there talking to Fatima and him like basically getting sunned because sir, yo, yo, your restraining order, just like Andy said, he's my client. So he gets to come up in here regardless of your goddamn restraining order. Now go wave your little piece of paper somewhere else. You ain't never doing no work. Every time we see you, you in somebody's office trying to menace or you walking around with coffee that you don't drink. Sir, go to hell. I love every moment I get to see Hayden get embarrassed. So there's that. But y'all go ahead and check out my preview video. It is up for next week's episode. I do do the breakdown of the teaser. And I'm also going to come back and do a trailer breakdown. I cannot wait to do so. We have no traction when it comes to uh, Sabrina. I guess the girl. <laughs> I'm not going to say they forgot about it. I'm about to be dramatic. <laughs> Andy is so called doing the best that she can, child. We'll see. Let me know what you thought about the episode in the comment section down below. It's your good sis, Erica Vain. The good sis that you love to talk TV with, of course. And catch up on any of my other sisters' breakdowns on my sister's season five playlist. If you missed any of it, again, my Zatima playlist is updated for you all as well. If y'all haven't checked it out, go ahead and check it out. It's a really good show. It's very, very um, entertaining. And if you love sisters, I think that you're going to love Zatima as well. I can't wait to jump in the comment section and see what y'all talking about. See you in the next one.